How's it going guys? In this video we're going to be talking about Dunda methods and Dunda methods stand for double underscore methods that or doesn't really stand for but that's what it means. A double underscore method is a Dunda method and if you've ever built a class the first Dunda method you probably learned was the init Dunda method, the initializer. As you can see it has two leading underscores and two trailing underscores. That's why they're called Dunda methods. Otherwise, you can also refer to them as magic methods. Both of those terms work when you are referring to these methods in Python. Anyway, what do we use Dunda methods for? Well, as a programmer, we would use these methods to give functionality to our user-defined objects. So we can actually tell Python essentially how to treat our class when we perform a certain operation. For example, you might have a class called fruit. And first of all, we want to add an initializer, which returns none. And maybe we will ask for a name. So we'll say name of type string. So self.name is going to equal that name. So now we have a class called fruit that can take a name. And we can also create an instance of this fruit. We can say uh, banana of type fruit is going to equal a fruit called banana. So the first under method we use here takes care of instantiating our object. We don't call this method anywhere in our code it automatically happens as soon as we tell Python we want to create an instance. It is called under the hood and it's part of the functionality that comes with our fruit class. But let's suppose we want to multiply fruit. If we were to say, okay, banana times four, and we were to run that, we would get unsupported operand types because it does not have that functionality. But we can provide that functionality via a Dunder method. We can go here and we can type in def double underscore or dunder multiply. And there are a lot of these. So right here it takes self, which is the current instance, and the other, which here I want to be of type integer. And that's going to return to us, I guess, a string, because we're just going to multiply that fruit many times. So return self.name times other. Now we successfully defined the functionality that we want to use when we are multiplying our fruit by an integer. So if we were to run this code again, we would get banana, 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 because that's the functionality we defined in our Dunder method. And again, we did not call this directly. It was called indirectly when we used the multiplication operator or the asterisk. And I believe you can call these directly if you want. You can also type in Dunder underscore multiply and you can add four and that will work as well. That's just not that common and looks incredibly ugly. And we want clean code because the Python Zen forces us to be its slave. So we will just do things conventionally. And there are many Dunder methods. There are so many Dunder methods that you can play around with. If you want to explore them, you can just add def underscore and your code editor will give you a lot of suggestions. Another thing you can do is tell the program what to do if you want to convert it to an integer. So here we're going to say, okay, if we use the int method on our fruit, this is going to happen. And this should return an integer. So we're going to return the length of the fruit. That's what we're going to use as our custom functionality. I'm not saying you should do this in a real code base. This is just to demonstrate that you can use the int method now as soon as you have defined it with your custom class. So here we'll type in self.name. And the next time we take the length of banana, or not the length, but the next time we try to convert banana to an integer, you'll see we're going to get the integer of banana back, which is six letters, so we're going to get six back. Now, of course, as I mentioned earlier, this is probably a stupid idea because it's not that intuitive. So what I should have done here is defined the length thunder method. This is much more fitting than the integer for this case because we're taking the length of the name and we're returning it the next time we decide to use the length of the banana, which of course will return six. But you can do something else. You can also always return zero. If you don't want it to return the length of the string, you can return whatever you want. And that's all we're doing with Dunder methods. We're providing that functionality that you would get with a lot of the inbuilt types to our custom classes. So if you are new to Python, I absolutely recommend you play around with these because there are so many you can use. If you just type in def double underscore, Again, you will get a lot of suggestions for Dunder methods that you can use with your class. Another one that's very common is the string representation. So if you were to type in string, this would return a string. And here we would return self.name, the name of the banana. 
So the next time you actually print this banana by itself, it's not going to give you some crazy, some crazy object with a memory address. It's going to give you the actual banana name. If we were to remove this line of code here, you would get the representation, which is illegible to a normal human. Of course, we know what it is because we created this fruit, but if you want it to be readable, you would have to add a string dunder method, or you would have to change the representation, which is the default for classes. So if you were to change this also to the same thing, you will also get banana back. But for the representation, it's usually a good idea to return something that's useful for the developer. So the default, which is this fruit object, makes sense for a representation. But if you define a string method, of course, it's nice to see the banana name in the console. Anyway, I really hope this video helped you to understand what a dunder method is. Of course, there's much more you can do with dunder methods than what I showed you. There are so many you can use, and I think they're super cool because of course, being able to define this custom functionality with your class is always cool, but I really must stress it's good if you follow conventions and you make it as straightforward as possible. Don't make your string method return an integer, for example. Try to follow as much logic as possible. But anyway, I would love to hear what you think about all of this in the comment section down below, whether you have some tips and tricks you'd like to share with the rest of us. And with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.